Okay, so welcome to this video, which I'm going to put in both the playlist on bacteriology and also the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. Now, in this video, what we're going to talk about is quorum sensing, which is basically a way that bacteria can sense the presence of neighbouring bacteria, bacteria, basically. So they can uh, sense the size of the population that they're in. Okay, now the reason I'm putting this in uh, the bacteriology playlist should be pretty obvious, but the reason I'm putting it in the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance is because it's going to show us an example of a physiological use for these drug efflux pumps that we have seen, um, well, these drug efflux transporters, which are uh, involved in bringing about antibiotic resistance. So we've seen the different types of uh, antibiotic resistant drug uh, transporters. Uh, and we saw that there was a lot of degeneracy, and that suggested that they had a function uh, beyond just the uh, transport of the drug out of the bacterial cell. Okay, so quorum sensing uh, is an example of the use of the, well, it's going to contain an example of the use of some of these um, drug efflux pumps. Okay, right. So, uh, firstly, let me tell you about what quorum sensing is. And well, firstly, let me tell you about an experiment that sh we're going to explain the results of with quorum sensing. So, the structure of this video is I'm going to outline the way bacteria bacterial populations grow, then we're going to explain the way bacterial populations grow using quorum sensing, okay? And then I'm going to talk about uh, quorum sensing. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at quorum sensing with molecules known as n acyl homoserine lactones, but I will explain exactly what those are later. And uh, then we will look again at another experiment where we knock out some of the drug transporters involved in transporting the uh, quorum sensing molecule N acyl homoserine lactones out of the um, out of the bacterial cell and see what they result in. Okay, right. So initially, then let me describe to you an experiment. So basically, we get a petri dish. So here's a petri dish. Okay. And we have filled this Petri dish with some agar medium that contains all the nutrients that bacteria need to grow. So generally, agar is this sort of blue colour, so I'll draw some sort of blue colour there to denote the agar gel. Okay, now, we are going to put some bacteria into uh, this medium. And for the basis of this experiment, we'll use the bacterium that is, always, always, that is almost always used in bacterial experiments, which is Escherichia coli. Okay, so here is our Escherichia coli, which is a gram-negative rod. Okay, so this is Escherichia coli. So gram-negative means that uh, when you stain it using the gram staining process, it appears red, and um, it being a rod is just that it's in, a, in the shape of a rod, basically. So when you look at it down the microscope, it looks like a little rod. The fancy name for it being a rod is that it's a bacillus. Bacillus means that it's rod-shaped, basically. Okay, um, so... Um, okay, so... what? What we want to do is we want to grow our Escherichia coli on this plate. So let's say we start with a very small little population of Escherichia coli that we have taken from someone somewhere, um, and uh, we're now going to grow them on this agar plate. Then basically, what we can do is we can plot the population of uh, Escherichia coli that is on this plate as a function of time. And you might wonder, well, how on earth do you plot the... How on earth do you know what the population of the bacteria on this plate is at any one time? Well, what you can do is you can do it using, um, the, using uh, spectrometry, effectively. So, what you can do is you can shine light through the colony and depending on the density of the bacteria in this plate, um, the light, the, it, well, the density of bacteria on this plate will determine how much of the light, what fraction of the light that you're shining through. So let's have our light here. Okay, so um, 
the um, density of the bacteria here will determine how much of the light, and I'm sorry if that yellow doesn't show up, will determine what density of this light, what, sorry, what fraction of the light gets through the bacteria population when we shine the light through it. So, using that, we can analyse the population of bacteria that is on this plate. So, what we find, if we do indeed plot population versus time on a graph, like so, is that, let's say the population starts off somewhere down here, then what happens is it goes up and up and up and up, and then it stops. It goes to this phase here, okay? And then what happens is they eventually use all the nutrients on the plate, and then they start dying, basically. So this is the death phase. So we can divide it into these different phases. So this phase here, where the bacterial population is growing, 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 this is the exponential phase. Okay? Exponential phase. Okay, then there is the stationary phase here. Okay, so this is the stationary phase, where the population, for some reason, stops growing, but they don't start dying. So what's happening there? Well, for a long time, what we thought was happening there was the bacteria were starting to run out of nutrients. Now, they hadn't run out of nutrients to the point that they were actually starting to die yet, but they were running out of nutrients to the point that they were stopping dividing. Okay? So, uh, we thought they were sensing that the nutrients were starting to get low, and therefore they didn't have enough nutrients now to continue dividing. Okay, well, what you can actually do is you can do this uh, in uh, a machine known as a, um, a chemostat, uh, where you continually refresh the nutrients, basically. So, instead, a chemostat is basically just like a chamber here. So, let me show you a chemostat. So here's a chemostat, which is just basically a chamber where you keep the bacteria in here. So this is a chemostat rather than a petri dish. A chemostat, uh, basically you keep the bacteria in this chamber, so the bacteria will be in this chamber, and you can continually refresh the nutrients, okay? So in that case, there's no problem with it, the bacteria running out of nutrients. Now, if you do the same experiment in a chemostat, what happens is, again, you go through the exponential phase where the population goes up, then it hits this stationary phase, and it won't hit the death phase in this case. It will just continue at the stationary phase if you're in a chemostat. The death phase is because they're running out of nutrients. So this phase here, this final phase, which occurred on the Petri dish but not in the chemostat, this is known as the death phase. Okay, right. So the point is that even though you keep refreshing them with nutrients, they stop dividing. They reach a point where they somehow know that they shouldn't continue on dividing. What is causing this stationary phase? Well, it's quorum sensing. The bacteria are talking to each other. Well, not quite. But they are, they are telling each other what the state of the population is, i.e. how densely populated they are. What, it, what they're really doing is they are all emitting little molecules, okay? So there are my little dots there, so let me draw it out again. So let me draw my population a little bigger now. So here are my Escherichia coli, gram-negative rods here. Okay, now, when the pop... Well, actually, all the time, these bacteria are releasing little molecules, which I'll colour in so you, that you can actually see them. They're releasing little molecules, which I'll show here in blue. Okay, and... Basically, when the population gets very, very dense, i.e. when these E. coli are living in very dense conditions, so when they're starting to get overpopulated, basically, what will happen is there will be so many of them producing these quorum signaling molecules that the concentration of the quorum signaling molecule will go up in the vicinity of all the bacteria. So because they're all now producing it, what will happen is you'll get a very high concentration of this quorum sensing molecule, okay? Now, the bacteria sense this high concentration of the quorum signaling molecule, and they then know that they need to stop dividing. So they can sense the concentration of this molecule here, and they realize that that, well, they, they, uh, 
evolution has set up mechanisms which mean that when this co the concentration of this molecule gets too high, they'll stop dividing, basically. And the reason that that's advantageous is that once the, um, once the quorum signaling molecule gets very high, it means that the population density is very high and there's not much more space for more uh, E. coli bacteria. So they hit the stationary phase. Okay, so that is the fundamental concept of quorum sensing. Now what we're going to do is to look at the actual molecule, or, or an example of an actual molecule that takes the place of this blue dot, but we'll do that in the next video.